Natalie and I'm Interiors here and today I'm going to be sharing with you the how-to's of a gallery wall. I recently shared an Instagram post of a custom built home I did, Project Burnett, and there was a living room and featured was a gallery wall. This one to be exact. And I got a lot of positive feedback and questions on how we came to conceive this gorgeous gallery wall. And I thought, what an excellent opportunity to use some downtime I had to be in my basement <laughs> and share with you all some how-tos that I hope will bring some guidance on how to create one. I actually have a few gallery walls in my own home because I love them so much. And this is one of them uh, where we spend a lot of time playing board games, uh, having some fun in the lounge area of our own home. Uh, it's a comic book feature that um, my husband collected over time in our own home. And um, it's something that we love and um, it's just one of many that we have. And I thought, why not share with you all some different ways that you can incorporate gallery walls. So, how to number one as a guide. Step one, do your research. So, doing your homework. I think a lot of people over time probably would have perhaps collected the old school way, magazine cutouts of rooms that they love, and perhaps to their surprise, may have had some cutouts of gallery walls. Um, modern age, maybe Pinterest, uh, saves on Instagram. Um, maybe they've been thinking about gallery walls and already have some boards dedicated to gallery walls. But if you're thinking about doing one, definitely set aside some visuals that you love because it's going to circle back to step number two, curate your collection. So these two steps really do come hand in hand because if you do your research and collect um, your pieces, you can really get a sense of what works well together, what suits your style and what suits your collection. And then you can cultivate um, really a gallery wall that best suits your home and tells your unique story. I definitely think in, in my personal experience and when I'm working with clients, I much prefer to work with a little bit more and edit pieces out if need be versus have a smaller limited amount of things to work with that are more generic and don't really tell a story um, because it tends to be less personal in that sense. I definitely love to hear how things came to be and have items that really reflect someone's true personality and tell a story because then it's a true reflection of the homeowners and, and really speak to how people live. So I always recommend to clients that they collect things that mean something to them, whether it's concert tickets, um, something that represents uh, their beliefs, um, things that they've collected over time. It could be photos of the kids. It could be travel photography. Anything that really makes them feel special, even if it's abstract art or less expensive but something that evokes a mood, things that people gravitate towards. So really spending some time on curating pieces that are a reflection of you will make your gallery wall feel that much more special. So that is step number two. In terms of step number three, um, this is um, really an interesting um, sort of step and somebody might think, oh, well, it's not that important, but I actually think it is. Um, and this is going to be pick your wall. Now, this might seem like um, an obvious, like, oh, just pick your wall. But um, I think it really comes into play because it is uh, an obvious choice for some people to say it's got to be this wall but other times it's a little bit more complicated if you have a curated collection that needs a little bit more space then obviously you need a larger wall uh, other times um, you might have a very small collection in which case you might do something a little bit more counterintuitive like use negative space to display 
your wall. Um, that might be something a little less obvious, like using a stairwell where you have some awkward angles or limited space, or doing something a little unexpected, like a guest bedroom where um, a guest might appreciate coming into seeing something a little unexpected, or using a wall where there's dormers or some slopes to do something interesting. So I always say to clients, think about where you would want to display your gallery wall and think about it carefully because a gallery wall can be a very large investment and you want to make sure that your your gallery wall is going to get um, optimal use and optimal enjoyment and you want to think about um, who is really going to appreciate it most and where you're going to get the most mileage out of that so step three would be um, picking the right spot now step four is a big one now for me uh, planning your elevation I usually do this on the floor because I'm vertically challenged being 5'2". I find planning the elevation on the floor gives me the most leverage because I can play with the pieces live and in person and a lot of times I can do that with the items um, not having to do templates and really get a good sense of how items relate to each other and move them around and everything be very malleable and pliable and see how things relate and make some changes, especially if I'm editing, because then I can take pieces away and see how things uh, work with one another and see what I like best and sort of walk away. A lot of times what I'll do is use some tools, one of which is the tape measure, because I like to do everything to scale. And I'm gonna work my way into step five, uh, being a map out and do a trial one on the wall. So in which case, when that is coming into play, I use some other tools. Painter's tape, which is a really great tool because a lot of times I will do paper cutouts for larger, heavier pieces that you don't necessarily want to put up on the wall. You can easily do a paper cutout and then uh, do a color copy and put it on the wall to get a sense of what it's going to look like. Or for some larger items that aren't necessarily art or if you have the piece, you can use the 3N command strips, which are an excellent tool. If you pay attention for the size and the weight in the corner there, there's different sizes. This is an excellent tool, but safety first. You wanna make sure you're putting the appropriate weight up on the wall so there's no accidents. You can really get a sense of what things look like by um, mapping things out. And I'm not a real stickler on rules, but I'm gonna say that step number five of doing a dry run, trial run on the wall, kind of is an essential because you don't want to get to a point where you're past the point of no return putting holes in the wall especially if you have limited resources and don't want to be spending more money patching things up this is a really important rule everyone so i'd say take your time planning map it out and do that trial run i'm also going to say that there are plenty of instances that working with a professional will make more sense in an instant uh, instance like this one where we had um, some really uh, special pieces and specific pieces. This took several weeks of planning. We actually had all of the holders custom made. They are acrylic pieces that are UV protected and fit every comic book so it's flush. Um, so we didn't really want to be having any trial and error. Um, I'm going to get into different types of gallery, uh, gallery walls uh, shortly. This was also what we call a grid pattern where it's very symmetrical and exact. So having professional installation and working with professionals is sometimes very important. It makes a lot more sense. You don't want to have anything even one eighth off when you have a number of things that need to be exact. It'll be very noticeable and there's times where where that level of precision, it's best to leave to a professional. So having said that, there's a lot of different types of gallery walls that make um, a lot of forgiveness a little bit more um, pliable. So uh, there can be a lot of different budgets and types in mind. So if you're doing a DIY, uh, maybe something like an Etsy, a Wayfair, an Ikea, they have ready-made 
sets where you can buy the frames pre-made and just put in your own art. Those are available at very attractive price points and very easy to customize if you want to do something small or a little bit more budget friendly and do that on your own. So just know that there's a gallery wall for everyone. So just keep that in mind that there is something for everyone, but you still want to do a level of pre-planning and do a trial run no matter what type of gallery wall you're doing, just so that way you're not disappointed and, and getting into something where you're disappointed and having to do some repair. We don't want to have that happening. And getting on to step six, you want to use some tools if they're available to you or you can also get them um, at a very reasonable price if you are doing them on your own. Something like a stud finder with laser level um, is going to be a great tool, especially if you're doing something again where you're having spacing involved. I like to leave two to four inches as a general guideline if you're doing some kind of symmetry type of layout and using tools that are going to give you that level of precision is highly recommended. You'll thank me later. Um, that's another pro tip. That's my tip number six is when you're getting to the stage of execution, make sure you take your time, use a spacer and a level so you can get that level of quality and take your time. That is tip number six. Use the right tools if you're doing it on your own. It does take time. If you are not analytical and you don't want to take your time, then leave it to a professional. And step number seven would be to have fun, enjoy your gallery wall, and switch it up. And having said that, there are a lot of different types of gallery walls that you can take on if you don't want to have a big level of commitment. They have the lean type that are usually displayed on a ledge or um, shelf. And these are really neat because they don't require a large level of commitment because you can just lean your canvases or your art pieces on the wall and those are great because especially if you're in a rental you're just putting up the one or two ledges and then you can switch the art accordingly um, that's a real great one i really like that there's a lot of different options available that's something i'm going to be doing in my daughter's um, homework lounge i'm very excited to do that i actually got some acrylic ledges from amazon that were very budget friendly um, that's something i'm going to be following up on uh, on my to-do list that I'm excited to get up. Um, another one here that you see is a more symmetrical pattern. That works really, really well when you have like-minded art pieces that are the same size, a collection of items. Uh, they're all matted the same. They're all spaced the same. Um, that works really, really well. This is a grid or column pattern um, often uh, referred to. Another one that's really popular that is really great if you're doing something progressively and adding to you over time. It's called the top down where the top row will be consistent and then you keep on adding down. That works really well. Another um, really great gallery wall is where you'll have a center focal point which is usually the largest piece on display and then spreading out. Um, sometimes there will be a center line which is your access and then you can do uh, sort of like a chevron pattern of different pieces or what they'll call a Tetris, where you'll jigsaw pieces in. And as a general rule of thumb, and, and again, I, I'm not really into rules, they're just guidelines. Sometimes if you wanna mix things up, you can do different textures, maybe mix different colored frames. Two to three tends to be a good number. If you're gonna go really eclectic, that's absolutely fine. But then I would recommend that you mix different profiles and different subject matter. So it really definitely tends to feel like it's meant to be that way. So you would have maybe a bust head or something sculptural mixed in with a canvas and photography. So it's meant to feel very eclectic. You can also get away when you're doing that type of layout with spacing being different as well because it tends to be more eclectic. And with that in mind, it's also really helpful to know that if you're doing, let's say, black and white photography, then of course a neutral backdrop does work. But you could get away with, let's say, a really wow feature color wall or, or even wallpaper in behind. But if you're doing, let's say, colored uh, paint, um, uh, as your subject matter, then maybe a more neutral paint makes more sense as your backdrop. So just keep that in mind when you're playing with your feature walls. Just sort of do that dry run, get a good feel of what things might be before you actually get things up, 
permanently. And when you do have a permanent installation in, don't be afraid to make those changes over time because that's the beauty of a gallery wall. So I hope those tips helped. I'll be sure to put in some references in my blog. Uh, feel free to like this video, subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.